So if you've done the perfectly normal thing and bought up a lifetime supply of bog roll to get you through the pandemic, you're going to need a reliable way of dispensing it. And today I'm going to show you how to fix a toilet roll holder that's loose on the wall. And I'm also going to give you a few tips for buying a decent one. Hiya folks, welcome back. And no, I don't use wet wipes on a toilet because I'm not five years old. Over the years, I've fitted literally hundreds of toilet roll holders and it's a topic that is rarely discussed. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a few tips of what to look for if you're buying a loo roll holder to try and get a decent one that won't fall off the wall. I'm also gonna fix this one and show you how to fix it. And uh, I'll give you a bit of a channel update later on because there's been quite a lot happening behind the scenes. First off, let's just have a quick look on the internet and see what the toilet roll holder market looks like at the minute. So my number one tip when you're deciding on a toilet roll holder to buy, the bigger the back plate that attaches onto the wall, the better. You can see this is a really old classic design of toilet roll holder here. It's fugly, I know, but the reason it hasn't fallen off the wall in like a hundred years is because well a it's got a decent sized back plate on it and b because we're screwed straight into wood here at the back you don't get a better fixing location than going into wood and as i say and see that stood the test of time and lasted forever this sort of design here is great because generally it's got a fairly big back plate behind here and you can use a wide variety of screws to hold it onto the wall but then we'll get to ridiculous designs like this. And as you can see, the customers had a stab of fitting it, but they're fighting a losing battle, really. They're on a hollow wall, and most hollow wall fixings have a fairly big kind of front plate on the fixing. And even if it wasn't a hollow wall, I'd still be wanting to have fairly decent sized screws holding something like this on the wall. And that's just not an option with these ridiculous designs. If you see a toilet roll holder like this, run a mile they are awful and just to show you here's a one on a hollow wall that i've had to fix and all i could really use was the expanding metal fixings and you can see the edge of them behind the back of the toilet roll holder there's very limited options with these things so they're awful as i say when you're picking a toilet roll holder have this in the back of your mind and have this in the back of your mind uh, just you need something that's got a big back plate on it so you can get decent sized screws through it just for a laugh, let's have a look at what the toilet roll holder market looks like in 2020. Here's screw fixes offerings. Um, these all look okay. Cook and Lewis tend to be an okay brand, so they'll, they'll probably be fine. I do vaguely trust the reviews that are on Screwfix and Toolstation, and normally I've found if something's getting lots of bad reviews, they stop selling it, unlike Amazon. Yeah, all of those look fine. Here, look, this is your friend, massive backplate, you can put giant screws in, that'll work on pretty much any wall. They're all obviously commercial ones. Interestingly, this one here, that's a towel holder. I wouldn't trust having the weight of a wet towel on a tiny little backplate like that. It's asking for trouble. Again, that sort looks like it'll be absolutely fine. It's got a fairly big kind of backplate thing on it. That'll probably be all right. 35 quid, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's have a look at the uh, market for knocked off and shoddy goods that is Amazon these days. My faith in Amazon is rapidly going downhill and it wasn't very high in the first place. Let's have a look anyway. Uh, what? Self-adhesive? Oh, is that what the world's come to? Literally sticking it on with double-sided sticky tape. Uh, no. Folks, don't use self-adhesive toilet roll holders. You're asking for trouble. Let's have a look at the reviews. They're always a laugh. Five stars. I wonder how many of those are real. Let's have a look at the one star reviews. Don't buy this. I bought this thinking it would have a sturdy hold, but I was wrong. It was super easy to stick on the wall. It fell on the floor in five minutes. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me one bit. Looks shiny and sleek, but not fit for purpose. Falls off with no toilet roll. <laughs> Falls off with no toilet roll on it. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look at this one. Amazon's choice. 471 ratings. Yeah, and I bet they're all real. Here's a five star review here. If like me, you've been balancing your toilet roll on your head for the last 40 years, wondering how and where on earth you would store such stuff. 
wonder no longer as I can confirm that this will hold your toilet roll for you. Only problem is the weight of the holder is a bit heavy when you stick it to your head, so I would heartily recommend that you find another area of your body to attach it to. Five stars though. Another one here, facing the prospect of having to drill into tiles, see self it Folks, drilling into tiles is easy. I might do a video about that at some point because, um, yeah, for me, self-adhesive is a bad route to go down. Maybe on a tiled wall, but on a painted wall, you're basically talking about the strength of the paint holding it onto the wall. It's, it's not going to work. This sort looks okay again. I would just be dubious about the quality on Amazon, I'm afraid. There's a modern equivalent of the old one that I showed you. That'll work absolutely fine if you're not particularly bothered about what it looks like. £1.90, that'll do the job. This wooden one here, it's got a big back plate, but I can't see any screw holes, and that means it's probably got keyhole slots on the back, and keyhole slots can be a bit of a pain in the backside. So I would probably avoid that. If you can't see where the screws are going, then mm, I don't know. It might be all right. It might. It probably won't be. Uh, this one here, absolutely fine. You can get great big screws in that, and you've got a place to store your phone. This one's even better because it's got a lip that points upwards to stop your phone from falling off. I quite like that actually. I think <laughs> if we ever get moved, that might be the route we go down. Or of course, you can just use a bit of old rope. That one's the wrong way round. That one's freestanding and saves you a lot of hassle. Another one here where you can get big screws through the back of it. That'll do the job brilliantly. You've got a waterproof dustproof dispenser here in case you want to use it underwater. Again, this sort here, you'll be able to get great big screws through the back of that. The screws might look a little bit ugly. That's the only thing. It's quite a nice toilet roll holder, that, but you'll not really see the screws once the loo rolls on it. Another sideways one. Let's have a look at tool station. Let's see what they've got. Again, these all look pretty good. Good. That's a not a toilet roll holder. Uh, this one that looks good. This one looks good. Crydex, decent brand. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems with that. Again, we've got another similar one there. It's hard to tell how big that backing plate is, but should be fine. Crydex towel ring with only one star. Let's have a look at the review. Don't buy. One star. Very disappointed in this item. Very difficult to put a toilet roll on. Uh, it's a towel ring. So you can see with this loo roll holder here, it's completely loose. Let me just get rid of that. It's it's really loose on the wall. It's kind of falling off, mainly because the little screw on the bottom wasn't tight, but the bracket itself isn't particularly tight on the wall either. And what tends to happen with these ones is that this bit comes loose. I don't know if you can see, so we're going to fix that as well. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove this from the wall because the fittings that have been used for this just aren't up to the job, basically. We're on a, a hollow wall here and we need slightly beefier fittings. We've just got a couple of little GP, Fisher GP fixings in here at the minute. And you know, they've lasted pretty well. They've lasted like seven years, but if you want something that's going to last a bit longer than that, then we really need to up the game on the plasterboard fitting that we're going to use and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Obviously, before you start all of this, if this bracket, if you've got one of these sorts and this bracket is tight on the wall, then probably all you need to do is tighten this screw and also make sure the little grub screw is tight in the bottom. Normally these are either attached with an Allen key, make sure the grub screw is at the bottom so you don't see it, and normally they're just attached with either an Allen key or this one is a little slotted drive screw that's in the bottom there. So just make sure that's tight and sometimes that can fix it. But if it doesn't, then you're probably gonna have to reattach this bracket here. Before I do that, let's get this thing fixed. So all I'm gonna do here, this screw on the back of these, they always come loose. And this is probably your number one reason why your toilet roll holders flapping about on the wall. There is another reason that I've seen sometimes on like really rubbish quality loo roll holders. What I've seen is the little square bit, can you see this square bit of the bracket here? If that's too long and it protrudes all the way through the hole in the back plate, if it goes all the way through, then the screw isn't providing any grip between the back plate and the little square bit onto the front bit of the holder. The only thing you can really do there, and it's a bit of a workshop job, is that you would need to file down this square bit a bit because that needs to be big enough to obviously get through the back plate, 
but not so long that it protrudes out the other side. If it does protrude all the way through, you're fighting a losing battle from square one. In fact, to be honest, if, you do fi if you've just bought a loo roll holder and you find that no matter how tight you make this screw, it's always flopping about, I would suggest you send it back because it's obviously a, it's a design fault, basically. Anyway, obviously when you're fitting this, make sure you've got the grub screw pointing downwards. So I want it uh, like that. So make sure you've got it the right way round. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite thread lock on the screw itself. I'm just using uh, Loctite 243. You use whatever thread lock you want. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on the thread. Doesn't need much. Make sure it's properly seated in the little square recess. And then I want to get this as tight as I can possibly get it. Because you don't want that coming loose once it's all fitted. By the way, don't be tempted to put thread lock on your grub screw. You'll never get it back out. So I'm just going to remove this bracket from the wall first of all. I've got my little dust catcher here because we'll be making a bit of a mess, so uh, saves putting a dust sheet down. Actually, I don't think they are Fisher GP fixings. Uh, they look different. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just drill these plugs out. This is the only time that I ever use a sharp drill bit on a plasterboard wall, on a hollow wall, because you really don't need it. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to use, it's about a 6mm drill that I'm using here, and I'm just going to drill out these two plugs. And then I'm just going to be using my go-to plasterboard fixing of choice for these. This is the uh, just the expanding metal anchors. They sometimes get called molly bolts. I've made a video all about these uh, before. I'll include a link in the description if you want a bit more information about how to use these. The key thing with these is that you need to use a setting tool. If you don't use a setting tool, you're going to have problems. But a setting tool makes life way, way easier. The way these work, once they're in the wall, I'll just show you on this one and completely destroy one of my plugs. Uh, once they're in the wall, obviously that back bit expands like, like that. And when that expands, that presses against the back of the plasterboard and you get a really good fixing. And obviously once you've done your first expansion like that, you can wind the bolt in a little bit more and you can do a little bit more just until it feels tight. You don't want to overdo it, but you want these arms here to be pressing on the back of the plasterboard. So you can kind of feel when it's at the right tightness, if that makes sense. The one limiting factor of these is that you're a bit limited on how close it can go together. I mean, generally, I wouldn't advise having any plasterboard fittings any closer together than this anyway, because there's only, you know, what, a centimetre of plasterboard between your top and bottom hole there. But what can happen is, is that the two, like an arm from here, can hit the arm from there. So if you note the orientation that this one goes in, so you see at the bottom here, we've got a gap. And then what I'll do is when I put the top one in, I'll aim to get the arm so that it's pointing upwards so that it goes into the gap where that one was, if that makes sense. So you can kind of get it so that the arms don't end up hitting each other. So all you do with these, just wind the screw out a tiny little bit so you can get the setting tool in. We'll pop this one in first. This one I'm going to do arm pointing upwards. So we'll go like that. Tighten it a bit. And as I say, don't overdo it because you can damage it, but 
you feel when it's like just digging in and that's fine. And then we'll do the top one. So that one, we had the arm pointing up. So this one, I want a gap pointing down. And in order to get a gap pointing down, I want the arm pointing up on this one as well. Same as before, tighten it up a bit. Do another quick squeeze. That's grand, ready to rock. And take these out now. One thing that's a really common problem, unfortunately, with these is that the back plate, the holes in the back plate are never big enough. For these particular fittings, it's an M5, so it needs to be a five millimeter hole. And uh, as you can see, it doesn't fit in. It's, it's close, but it's not close enough. So we're gonna have to drill these holes out to make them a little bit bigger. Don't attempt to hold this while you drill it. It's a sure way of getting a drill straight into your palm of your hand. The tool of choice I like to use for holding something like this is uh, mole grips. So all you do with the mole grips is get them kind of, so that it just feels like it's gripping and then you just adjust this screw on the back until you can feel the pressure's about right. That's perfect and then that's locked in. And then if the drill suddenly goes flying through, I'm not gonna injure myself. So I'm just using a five mil HSS bit on my drill, just to drill these out a tiny bit. They don't need much. And you can see I'm kind of wiggling about a bit in the hole. That's what she said. And just check that it goes through now, which it's fine. So we're onto the home straight now and we just need to pop the bracket on and I like to just use an electric driver just to get the bolts vaguely tight, but I like to start them off by hand. It's very easy to cross thread these accidentally. So I, I generally start them off by hand. Get that not tight yet. And then get that one in again. Starting it off by hand, just so I can feel I haven't cross threaded it. As I say, you're into um, problem territory if you cross thread it. Here's a little tip. If you just loosen the bottom one, the bottom one's nice and loose, you should find it'll hang naturally plumb, if that makes sense. So if your bottom screw is nice and loose, you should find that it'll pretty much level itself at this point. So I'm gonna tighten the top screw first. Don't over tighten it. You can easily pull the fitting all the way through the plasterboard. So it doesn't need to be like crazy tight. And then we'll do the bottom one. Loosen off the grub screw in the back of the holder. And get rid of this now. Top goes on first, so the top kind of hooks on. And then we tighten this from the bottom. Can't find the hole, that's what she said. And then I just like to get a spirit level and just double check its level. You do want the ability to get that grub screw back out if it does come loose, but you know, sensibly tight. Give it a quick wipe down, get all your greasy finger marks off it. And that is us all done. That is absolutely solid. I mean, it's plasterboard, so bear in mind the limitations of, of drywall. If a child hangs on this, it will fall off the wall. Well, it'll pull the plasterboard away from the wall and it'll destroy your plasterboard. There's nothing you can do about that. Tell your kids not to hang on your toilet roll holders. And that's us done. Folks, I am gonna be doing a last notes from a small workshop as soon as I've got a move date. As you might have guessed, house moves have grown to a halt at the minute, so uh, things are just moving really, really slowly. But there is progress. Absolute worst case scenario, you know, we'll, we'll stay where we are. We like living here, so it wouldn't be the end of the world to just knock the whole thing on the head. But hopefully that won't happen and things will 
plow ahead as per usual. There's been a whole load of stuff going on behind the scenes. I've been tidying up a lot of my other channels. So if you do want to subscribe to them, I've got my small business channel, I've got drumming stuff, and I've got a whole load of drone and farming simulator stuff as well. So if any of those float your boats, please do subscribe. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do because we are getting very close to a certain milestone. So it would be absolutely amazing if you could hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. In the meantime, take care folks and uh, look after that toilet roll of yours. Taddy bye!